Hi booktube, I'm just enjoying a glass of Riesling, hope you don't mind. I'm not drunk, it's my first glass of the day. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Hi everyone, I'm here today with my April TBR. I've started doing these because I've got so many books from publishers that I actually need to, to get through on a by a specific point. So I'm setting myself certain targets. I'm also taking place, taking place, taking part in some readathons. So I'm currently, I'm just going to go through what I'm going to be reading this month and also what I'm currently reading. So I'm currently reading this book, which is a biography of a lady named Lizzie Siddall or Lizzie Siddle. The Tragedy of a Pre-Raphaelite Supermodel by Lucinda Hawkley. This was one of the books sent to me again by Cartland Publishing. I'll leave that unboxing down below for you. They sent me this last year. I'm slowly getting through them all. They were very, very kind to send me them for review and I am reviewing them all one at a time and very, very slowly. So this is the story of Elizabeth Siddell. She was the the model who posed for Malaise's Ophelia and as you can see, if I just move the bookmark, that's a close-up of that painting and she actually died aged 32 because she killed herself so this is her story and i am not very far into it but i'm really enjoying it it's fascinating to learn of what at the time is what it was like at the time to be a model I and mean, she wasn't from a very wealthy family she worked in a milliner's which is as a milliner which is a milliner 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 um in a hat shop and she was discovered and became the darling of the pre-Raphaelite movement for a little while and married the painter Rossetti, uh, Dante, Rosa Dante Rossetti. Um, and yeah, it's very fascinating, very tragic. And as you know, I do love my non-fiction. So that's what I'm reading at the moment. Obviously I'm taking part in two readathons. One is a booktube readathon and one is a Facebook readathon. So the booktube readathon is the one that binge read you, oh, I cannot speak today, the one that binge, you'd think I'd drunk a whole bottle of this or two, that binge reader is hosting, Missy at binge reader, and that is the Stegan, Stegan see what I mean? The Stephen Kingathon, and this month's book is The Gunslinger, part one, book one in the Dark Tower series. I've not read any of these but I'm really looking forward to getting into it because I'm enjoying reading all these Stephen Kings because a lot of these ones that we're reading I haven't read and I've read a lot of Stephen King in my time but I haven't read them all so that's this month's book so that's on the TBR I'm also taking place so I just don't know what is wrong with my mouth today I'm also taking part in the Facebook group We Ain't Dead's Terry Pratchett rereadathon in honour of his passing, or as I like to call it, the Terry Pratchett Memorial Readathon. This is a year-long readathon in which we are rereading the entire Discworld series, or as much as we can. I am being a purist and I'm reading them from beginning to end. So last month I read The Colour of Magic and The Light Fantastic. I only read those two because it started mid-month. Obviously I've got a full month, but I've only put two books on my TBR from Terry Pratchett and then if I get time I will read a third one. So third book in the series is Mort. This tells the story of Death who takes an apprentice named Mortimer or Mort for short and this is the one thing that always grabs me about the Terry Pratchett Discworld stories that throughout all the characters that we meet over the years in the Discworld, Death, you know, big man made of bones, empty eye sockets, rides a big horse, carries a scythe, that death out of all of Terry Pratchett's characters is the most human. And he is. And I think Pratchett intended it that way. Death is more human than any of the human characters. Um, so there you go. What can I say? I love it. Love the death series. And the second one that I'll be reading this month definitely is my slightly chewed up copy of Equal Rights. Now it's chewed because it got chewed up by a dog I had once years ago. So Equal Rights tells the story of Escarina Smith um, and she is the eighth child of an eighth son. So basically what happens is the, the eighth son of an eighth son is a wizard but the eighth son of an eighth son who was a wizard is a sorcerer and so on it goes on like that but it turns out that the eighth son of the eighth son is a girl. So Escarina wants to become a 
wizards. And of course wizards don't become, aren't women. Women are not allowed in the Unseen University so how can Escarina become a wizard? And this tells her story and it is the first story in which we meet the lovely, lovely, fantastic, most wonderful character of Esmeralda Granny Weatherwax or Granny Esmeralda Weatherwax. Granny Weatherwax! Yay! We love Granny! So there's that one. The next are two books or three books that I've been sent by publishers. Um, the first one is The Summer House Party by Caro Fraser. This is a Head of Zeus publication. I am taking part in their blog tour which is later in the month. I don't have the dates yet but I will let you know so that one obviously is not small. They're not small. I cried when I saw how big this was because I've also got to read The Dog Walker uh, for Head of Zeus by Leslie Thompson and that's not particularly small either and this is a detective story so I'm really looking forward to this. This one takes place in between the two wars, it's actually in 1936 so three years before the Second World War and just basically tells the story of a group of friends that come together one summer and tragedy happens I believe so I'm looking forward to it because um, Basically, Head of Zeus send me information and then if I want to take part, I just go back to yes please uh, if the book sounds like something I want to read. So I, I don't just accept them for the sake of accepting books. Um, and this one is um, the Detective's Daughter series. So Sunday Times has said this is a haunting novel about loss and reconciliation driven by a simple but clever plot. So yes, that's the dog walker. So that one for Head of Zeus. Now this one I have a blog tour date for. The review for this is due on the 25th. I'm actually in London on the 25th so my written review will be scheduled to go up on that day um, but I'll actually have to schedule it the day before but it will go up on the 25th. The next one is one that was sent to me by Book Guild and that was that is Sorex Redemption by Hedley Harrison. This was actually sent to me at the end of February, I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Sounds fantastic, it has been hauled. Uh, basically men are only for subservience and breeding. Uh, social status is determined by skin colour and the country, the world is ruled by a senate of black women and there is little place for fair skinned and pale skinned and fair haired women. Uh, but this tells the story of Sorak is a blue-eyed pale-skinned female military officer who wants something more. So it's turned everything on its head and it sounds brilliant so I'm going to be reading that this month. Three to go and then the TBR jar. I mean yes it's a big TBR for April. So the next one I've got is the first in a series or a, I'm not even sure it's a series or a duology I'm not actually sure or a trilogy um, because I haven't read it yet and this is Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. I got this at Octavo Books in March and it is signed. So I will be reading that this month. I'm looking forward to that one. I just I know they've brought the covers out with people on them and I actually prefer these ones because I love the gold for him. <laughs> mm, so pretty. And then I'm going to continue my love affair with another chunker and that is Book three, part one in A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin and that's A Storm of Wards, Swords, <sighs> shoot me now, A Storm of Swords, Steel and Snow. Obviously this book was so big when it came out that the paperbacks, mass market paperbacks which these are, had to be split into two. So I'm going to read part one. And finally from the definitive uh, TBR that I will be reading this month is another chunker uh, coming in at 800 pages and that is one book I've actually read, it's the only re it's, it's another reread for me this month and that is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Look at the size, look at the prettiness. It's time. I've had a break from Harry Potter and George R.R. R. Martin so I'm going to be reading those this month as well. What a huge chunk of books. So the TBR jar which I've put down here. I'm going to give it a bit of a shake and I'm going to just open it up and I don't look so you know, I don't know what I'm getting. I've gone, I've gone to the bottom. It's green. I'm terrified it's going to be another huge chunk and I'm going oh no. And this one is oh this is Judy with love. You can't see it but it says Judy with love and it's by Lorna Smith and this is a book on Judy Garland by the lady who ran her fan club for many years. So yay! It's another non-fiction. Hey? <laughs> you know, out of all the books I've been picking out of the TBR jar since I started it last August, 
only one has been fiction they've all been non-fiction so that's Judy with love so yeah that is my TBR for April I am looking forward to seeing what you're all reading and getting up to on booktube world and I'll see you soon booktube cheers